So when you think a deliberate thought of what you want, um, then law of attraction will employ the universe and all people, circumstances and events to move you to what you've asked for and to move what you've asked for to you. And so if, if, if you think about that, there is just action would be really, really hard for you to reach all of the people, circumstances and events, manipulate all of them to receive what you want. And if you really reflect well on your life and things that have happened in your life, you kind of see that actually that happened for me. Uh, all I did was move to here or all I did was move to there and I received what I wanted. Thought creates all of the appearances in the world and thought creates everything in your life. So it's pretty darn powerful, right? And what you think about is what you get, what you focus on is what will manifest in your life and everyone is manifesting their day every single day. We're doing it. Um, we are not aware, of course, necessarily of thoughts, but Thoughts come, we energize them, and then they will manifest unless we cancel that thought out um, with another thought, with a thought that contradicts it. But I remember Lester Levinson would say, every single thought manifests. And I just thought that was incredible. I had known the secret for years and years and years. And Lester Levinson was a real master. Um, and he said every single thought manifests and I was just, wow, that's how powerful they are. So, so thoughts are your superpower to be, do and have what you want to experience and have and do in your life. And, and so if you ask um, an athlete or if you talk to a coach, a really brilliant coach, right, of a sports team, then you will find that visualization and these principles that I'm talking about are a big part of their training. They, they have to be. They have to see themselves winning the game. They have to see themselves winning the match. There is a really incredible tennis player that's a very big fan, a, a, um, a champion tennis player that's a really big fan of the secret, who uses the secret. This is what he does. He sees that he has won the match before he walks out onto that court. And and it's the same for, um, for teams. It's the same for athletes in the Olympic Games running a race and seeing that they've won. Yes, they run the race, but what has them win the race is that they saw themselves winning before they even got on the starting block and they saw it and believed it and felt it and so they just, everything lined up for them in the perfect way. They drew the perfect lane. Everybody else was was moved in exactly the right position and they got a really great start and they won the race. And so thought is just so, so powerful. So athletes, but also do you know, the astronauts in the Apollo um, program did visualization before they went to the moon and they visualized landing back on earth safely. And so that's how important visualization, visualization is just thought in pictures, by the way. It's, it's, it's still thought. It's just the same thing, okay? It's just thought in pictures. So if you took a person who had zero resistance and you locked them in a room, you know, if you took a person that had zero resistance, that person thought about what they wanted, zero resistance, locked them in a room, what they wanted will come to them. The universe will move people, circumstances and events and bring that right to them. It must, it absolutely must. Because if you have no resistance, you have unleashed a law that just cannot be stopped. And so you will manifest, it will come to you. Need motivation? Watch your top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Rhonda Byrne and my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. 
Rule number two, welcome negative emotions. In my latest book, The Greatest Secret, the most important practice in that book, without a doubt, is welcoming negative emotions because when you welcome any negative emotion, you are dissolving it from within your body, from within the subconscious mind. The next time, say, for example, if it was anger, the next time you feel anger, it's not nearly as bad. You welcome again the time after that. It's reducing, reducing until it's not possible for you to feel anger anymore. And with that anger gone from your body, your body, the health of your body is working brilliantly. But two, you will just manifest like you can't believe, like just a single little flimsy thought and it will manifest. So getting rid of negative emotions, also negative emotions are covering over your basic nature, which is happiness. And all of this I explain in The Greatest Secret. I explain it all in here. Um, and so, yeah, it's your, it's your basic nature. So negative emotions are covering up your happiness. So to get rid of those emotions is really, really important. So now I wanted to explain that to everybody who doesn't know about the welcoming process. And now let me explain the welcoming process to you. What we tend to do with negative emotions is we tend to resist them because they don't feel good, right? And so we want to push them away. We don't want to feel them. We don't want to feel fear. We don't want to feel disappointment, impatience and anger. And so we'll push them away. We think we're pushing them away. But in actual fact, we're pushing them down here into our body, into the subconscious mind. And they act like a pressure cooker. They're causing harm to the body, but they also act like a pressure cooker in that they need to release some energy to so that because they're just about to burst. And so they'll find something in the world, an emotion will find something in the world to get angry about to release the pressure in your body. And so welcoming is the opposite to resisting. You're pushing them away. Now you're not going to do that. Now you're going to welcome the negative emotion. So when a negative emotion arises, basically what you're going to do is kind of do nothing, you know, really um, welcoming is just stopping us from resisting. What I do is I imagine that that emotion is a really, really good friend of mine and I'm just allowing it to be here. I'm allowing it to be here in the body. And I just imagine that it's a friend and I put my arms around it. And as you welcome it or allow it to be here, something absolutely incredible happens. It just dissolves. It just dissolves. And in that moment, you have managed to get rid of a whole lot of that negative emotion in your body. And so that's why this is the most incredible process because A, you will get happier and happier. B, every desire you've ever wanted will be fulfilled. And C, you will have the most incredible life, a life free of fear and, um, and knowing who you are and understanding the incredible power you have in the world. So just imagine that it's, you have a friend and you're putting your arms around a friend. That is how I do it. But also, too, something you can do is I'll just make sure you can see my arms. What you can do is just open your arms up like this because opening your arms like this sort of opens the whole chest area and that automatically makes you stop resisting, right, and you open like this and you will feel that negative emotion dissolve. Rule number three, keep your mind open. For all of us, you know, and uh, uh, we've been conditioned, you know, I mean, you were very fortunate because you you had a, a childhood where you were, mind was opened and you were opened and your heart was opened. And that's the biggest, biggest thing is to open yourself to the possibility that everything isn't the way it appears to be. And so even if you can just open yourself to that possibility just for a moment, you can pick up it all the next day. You can take it all with you the next day that it's all real and everything that you're seeing. But if you just for a moment open to the possibility that things might not be the way that you think they are, then you have the greatest opportunity to really discover something incredible how incredible you are. Rule number four, 
believe. Everything is possible, you know, when you believe. That's the kind of kicker. You have to believe. But it's not that hard. It's really pretty easy. Our belief creates our entire life experience. And so you can't, if I put it this way, you can't experience anything in life that is outside of your own beliefs. So, and that's that's the case for every single one of us. We really can't experience anything that's outside of our beliefs. If we can't experience anything that's outside of our beliefs, what that means is, look at all those hearts, that's so beautiful. <laughs> what that means is there's not really one world. We kind of think there's one world, but there isn't really because we're all experiencing a world based on our beliefs and not one of us has the same beliefs, not one of us. So that means there's a different world for every one of us. So all of your beliefs are held in your subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is just a part of your mind. There's the conscious mind and then there's the subconscious mind, which is actually higher than the conscious mind. And so we use our conscious mind with all of the thoughts and everything that we have. Our conscious mind is very present, right? And so to create anything, you are using your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind is what is really what creates. If I want to make it really, really simple, then I would say your subconscious mind is what creates. It makes things appear and manifest things. And that's where all of your beliefs are stored. Kind of neat, huh? Because you have to believe to manifest something and your subconscious mind creates everything. So you can see it's all kind of perfectly designed. Um, so now to manifest, you have to believe. And you have to believe that you already have whatever it is that you want. And the reason that you have to believe you have it already is because the subconscious mind is only operating in the present. It can't reason. It's just like a program. So if you say, for example, um, a new car is coming, my new car is coming, I'm going to get a new car, it's coming, well, then it's always going to be coming, right? That's the, that's the thing. You have to imagine you have it now. You have to go off and you have to test drive the car. You've got to feel the car, smell the car, and just then visualise being in that car. And then when you do that, that's how, if you do that enough, that's how you'll come to believe that you actually have the car. And the moment that you believe, there's manifestations instantaneous. So, so the other ways to believe is to affirm over and over and over. Um, so to be really repetitive, for example, um, to visualise. And visualising is incredibly powerful because when we close our eyes and we put ourselves in the picture, and you must make sure you're in the picture, and you put yourself in the picture with whatever it is that you want and you close your eyes and you just kind of create this mini movie, honestly, the subconscious mind does not know that you're imagining it, has no idea. It just sees that movie and recreates it. It's like a giant photocopying machine. It will just, whatever you hold in your mind, it will photocopy it, boom, into the world. So, um, so if you are thinking about something in the future, it's always going to be in the future. So you have to... Imagine that you have it now. You have to act as if. And, um, for example, if you wanted to attract a perfect partner, are you acting as if your perfect partner's here already? And so there are just small things that you can do that are super, super powerful. For example, are you sleeping in the middle of your bed or are you sleeping on one side of the bed because your partner's on the other side of the bed? Do you have room in your wardrobe for your perfect partner's clothes? Is there room in your bathroom for their toothbrush and for their things? And so you see, they are just little things. You can set the table for two. You don't have to put food on the plate, but just setting the table for two is really, really powerful. It's saying my perfect partner's here already and the subconscious mind will believe it and your perfect partner will be attracted to you through the most incredible circumstances. So 
um, if something hasn't manifested yet and you really, really want it, and I, I doubt there's anybody out there who's who wants something and it hasn't manifested, right? I mean, I don't <laughs> Um, I'll tell you the reason why it hasn't manifested is because you don't believe you have it. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, Video absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business I'll see you there rule number five eliminate doubt doubt is comes from the mind and they're just thoughts and and they the reason that they're appearing is because you have a belief that is saying that you don't have this already but just don't give those doubts any any energy and work harder on feeling that you have your manifestation because when you believe you have your manifestation no thoughts of doubt will come when you believe you have it you have overridden any other belief in the subconscious mind you've reprogrammed your subconscious and then it will manifest so just remind yourself that you are the power that creates everything effortlessly effortlessly you are that power so so just take it it's not it's not an effort it's really easy you know <laughs> it's it's really easy just take it easy let go of the let go of the doubtful thoughts rule number 6 observe your thoughts how do we break that negative thought pattern right so so you, I mean, the mind is like a computer program. So, and and the fact that it's on a negative loop is because we programmed it on a negative loop. But, but you know, we could have been influenced when we were children and things like that. So, um, so one of the things that the mind loves is loves repetition. I mean, loves it. You know, if you really watch your thoughts, this is the same old thoughts over and over again, you know, it's just kind of dishing up the same old thing. So it loves repetition. So the way you can override a program is to put in the opposite, you know, and when you start out, you know, you feel like you're lying, you know, you'll say something like, you know, you might be really broke. Gee, I was when I was making the secret. So um, you, you might not have any money and you're trying to instill, you know, wealth and prosperity and riches and every time you say it, you feel a contraction in your body because you know you don't have it. But, you know, truly because I did it myself, after a while you change it, you, re you really begin to change it and you don't quite have that contraction anymore. And then you start to see money coming in, you know, in, in different ways. Um, and, and, it, and, and, or you can be given things that you were going to buy and now you don't have to buy it. Or so you begin to see, you start to see signs of land, you know, is one of the great, one of the great new thought, thought, um, writers would say, talk about a sign of land. So you start to see sign of land. Now that's what I did in the secret. You can do gratitude. That will turn everything around. That will make you feel good. That will get you off the negative rant. But those negative thoughts are coming from beliefs held in the subconscious mind. Right. That's where, where do the those, beliefs stem from for most of us? They stem mostly from our childhood conditioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody's, our parents said something to us. We just swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. You know, we're like, right, that's a belief. And uh, and so we take it in and, and then we have all these beliefs that, that uh, and you can hear, you know, if, you, if you're talking to somebody, like if, if, if somebody says, oh, I believe da, 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 or because we say that all the time, or somebody says, I think da, 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 behind those two, uh, behind those two statements are going to be a belief. Mm. And so the really interesting thing, they're hard to spot because you believe they're true. <laughs> they seem real, right? yeah. They seem so you real. don't think, yeah, you don't think they're a belief. You, you think they're real, you know, and so they can be hard to spot. But if you start to listen to yourself, you know, I believe or I think, or especially look at the things that you have a really strong opinion about, mm. because where you have a really strong opinion is a belief that's underneath that. 
So, so one of the things that in the latest book is that I show how to um, show how to dissolve those those beliefs and j- just really by some of the things that I've just mentioned. And, uh, and, and you can dissolve them and you just feel free. Every time a belief goes out, you feel completely free. You know, it's an it's amazing, amazing feeling. To, you just feel as light as a feather and actually you feel invincible. Rule number seven, stop resisting things. The welcoming practice sounds counterintuitive, that you would welcome something, right, that you don't want. It's like, whoa, hang on a minute. That doesn't make any sense. It does when I explain this to you, is that what when something that we don't want appears, we resist it. And if you remember in the secret, what you resist persists. And so if you're resisting something you don't want, it will never go away. Welcoming is the opposite to resisting. Welcoming stops you from resisting. That's why it's so brilliant. Because resistance is not fab, really. Um, But even that idea of resistance not being fab is something to welcome. That thought is something to welcome. And just welcome that thought and then that thought will completely dissolve instead of building up inside of you and the mind saying, yeah, resistance isn't any good, yeah, you know, the mind adding a whole lot of other thoughts, <laughs> a whole lot of other thoughts. So that's a perfect example of welcoming. Now, what I did just then, because I've welcomed for the last four years, what I did just then, I felt it completely dissolve in my chest, that thought. I, the feeling that was behind that thought just completely dissolved and now that is gone. So it's, it's, it's that easy. Rule number eight, go with the flow. I love going with the flow. I really do because I have found that life will present to me manifestations far greater than I could ever imagine with my mind. And so I'm really just these days letting everything go because life does a way better job than me. Um, I can't even think of things that, that are more fantastic than what life does. Rule number nine, believe in abundance. I had this belief that I did not have an abundant amount of money and uh, that I was always in struggle. And that came from my parents, bless them, you know, they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that came from them, you know, we can't afford it and all of those things. So I was brought up with that as many of us are. So the, the one, one that I had the biggest thing to overcome, the belief, the biggest thing to overcome was the belief in lack of money. And, and I knew I needed to overcome that for the secret to sweep the world. All the things I was going to buy, you know, when the money came in. Huh. Um, so I did all of these lists and I imagined that I had those things already. Um, and yeah, and I wanted, I remember it was like, I want a house on the ocean. I really went all out, you know, that was just some list. Um, one of the things I remember is that I'd always wanted a Range Rover all of my life, and that was just beyond anything I could afford. And uh, especially in Australia, like they were crazy prices. So, but still, I put it on the list and I put all these things on the list. But, you know, interestingly enough, like I did that because that was a way to turn money around. But when the secret got released, I didn't care about any of it because, mm-hmm. and I didn't even care. All that mattered was that I had got it out into the world and now it was in the world. It could never be taken away. And that is what mattered to me more than anything is that that was going to get into people's hands. And so, um, but still, I have to tell you, got all the things on the list, <laughs> you know, there's amazing views out here of the ocean. Um, I ended up by getting a Range Rover. Um, and so, yeah, but I did I did a lot of practices. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is be who you are. The best thing that could happen to everybody is that their greatest dream comes true. Because when your greatest dream comes true, the dream that where you are absolutely convinced that when this dream comes true, that is when I will really be happy. The best thing that can happen is that dream comes true because when it does, you will realise that there is something missing and that happiness that you thought you would have 
doesn't last. And so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. And for people who have been successful, then they get to that point and they're like, they're not happy. And they're not happy because those things were never going to make you happy in the first place anyway. And so, um, but in terms of success, I would say this, that when you are who you really are, when you're living from the place more of who you are than who you are not, everything that you need and want will fall into your hands effortlessly. And you are actually the infinite being is effortless. And the way to kind of tell who's in charge is whether it's the ego or the mind that's in charge or, or who you really are that is in charge in any moment is effort. And if you're efforting, if you can feel this efforting, then it's the ego and the mind. And if you're coming from a place of effortlessness, where athletes call it being in the flow and everybody has these kind of descriptions, it's where the mind has stopped and just everything is flowing. You just feel like everything in the universe is just dancing your dance and singing to your song. And so in terms of success, when you are being more of who you are, that idea that was going to make you successful is what will come to you, that original idea, because the mind just recycles. That's all it can do. It's a program and recycles. And the ideas that business kind of business ideas that have never been on earth, they are coming from awareness. They are coming from above the mind. So when you are awareness, that is when everything will fall into your hands, everything that you need. And it just, your whole life flows and you're just happy all of the time. Don't identify with all of those thoughts that are jumping around everywhere. And this takes a little bit of practice, right? Because what might happen is, um, let's think of, some situation you're at work and your boss kind of gets into you about something and that's usually when the monkey mind appears right when you're upset and then it's just like great got all this energy I'm gonna go crazy boss always picks on me boss does this boss this that and so when you have a situation like that where the mind is doing that just notice the mind just notice it the minute that you notice it, you are no longer believing it and your mind is going into the background. If you would just notice those thoughts instead of believing those thoughts. So if your boss beats you out and then you, and then you start to have all of those thoughts and you know what, you might be two hours later, you might be the next morning and you've still got all the thoughts coming and then you suddenly remember, notice the thoughts that is fantastic that you've remembered because that noticing disempowers the mind. The more that you can notice and not identify with those thoughts that you don't want, the weaker and weaker the mind will get, the negativity in the mind. And soon it's just going to be like a little lamb that you can use for whatever you want because that's all, that's the only reason why we created the mind. We created the mind, for my, this is my teacher told me this and I love it, we created the mind for one reason, to, to manifest what we want on earth. That's why we've got it. It's not our psychologist. It doesn't know anything about psychology. It's not our psychiatrist. It doesn't know anything. It doesn't know anything about your mum. It doesn't know anything about your best friend or your boss. So just keep it in its right category and, um, and then you will start to lessen the impact of your mind and that monkey mind will start to get quieter and quieter. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome.
To see the top 10 I did on Louise Hay, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. When life calls us, that's when we have to answer. One of my thoughts about life is that only good lies before me. And I've been saying this for many years.